G'day guys and girls and thank you for joining me. Today we're here to celebrate 10K, baby. I cannot thank you bloody guys enough. 10,000 people supporting my stupid Australian face and voice. That is absolutely dreams coming true. Thank you from the bottom of my bloody heart. Your support, I, I cannot even describe how much your support means to me. Through thick and thin, I've been through everything in the last two years, but you guys continue to support and grow on this channel. So thank you to all the men and women out there. I appreciate it so bloody much. Today, we're doing something a little bit different, a q and A. I've reached out to you guys on my Facebook, Instagram, and obviously on YouTube. So if you're not following me on the other social platforms, make sure to head away over there because on my Facebook, I am most active doing like giveaways, uh, upcoming print sales, courses, whatever it is, Facebook is sort of my go-to for keeping close my, my close homies, my home dogs over on Facebook. This sort of shit, I like. I can open up, I can be a bit more adventurous, a bit more free. I don't know, I like it. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy this Q&A podcasting type of stuff because you know I want to open up who I am off a of vlog. I'm Matthew Storer. I'm a crazy idiot traveler just trying to love every minute of his life and you know, give some to you guys. That's basically what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna start off with the first platform over on YouTube and just go through these questions. I've maybe looked at 35% of these questions, so let's see what we've got. First one is on YouTube, 365 Thrive. Love the tag. It may be too personal to ask, but would you mind going over your income streams as a full-time photographer, i.e. do you use stock, have clay, do you have clients paying a retainer, would be an interesting topic to cover in regards to how you sell photography. Thanks and congrats on 10K. Firstly, thank you very much for 10K. I really appreciate it. And secondly, no questions are off limit. If I passed you on the street and you asked me anything, I would pretty much answer it apart from, you know, how big is it? That's a bit personal, but anything photography, business, life related, I'm an open book, man. I'm here to share with you the highs, the lows, the negatives through life. So don't be afraid to ask me anything even on future vlogs, whatever. Um, my question to this is pretty dismal. Don't become a full-time photographer. I mean that in the, in the nicest way. Like, you know, I'm not a photographer. I'm not a business photographer. I'm a person that loves to pick up my camera and take beautiful photos all around the world. So for the last 12 months, I've really been learning the hard way in business. I've lost a bit of money. I've hurt a few people on the way and the revenue stream isn't great. Stock photography, I use Adobe, Shutterstock, and I don't rely on them at all. I get paid out probably every five months, and that's $100. So averaging out over the year, I think in total, I've earned about $400 in the last two years. So I don't worry about it at all. Then to do stock video, black box, I'm gonna leave the link description for that. If you are a videographer, YouTuber, cinematographer, you should be using black box. And on some months, I earn $200. And then I went three months where I didn't earn anything. So it averages to about 60 bucks a month, I would say. YouTube, my best month ever. I've done 200 euros, but I average around 100 to 120 euros. So basically you wouldn't even get out of bed for that. You know, it takes me 15, 20 hours to edit a video. So you're looking, you know, pretty much a part-time job for 100 euros a month. It is absolutely crap. Amazon affiliate, I used to be earning about 100 to 150 euros. It used to be quite good. Amazon done their cuts, I'm down to about 50 or 60 euros, so not great at all. Uh, workshops are becoming more steady. I'm trying to build a name, build a brand for myself, get you guys to love me, come to this beautiful country, Slovenia. They're doing pretty well, and obviously, when you get two or three of those people, it is quite good. I love doing that sort of stuff, you know. My workshops aren't crazy expensive. I never will make them crazy expensive. I wanna make them private uh, because I just love photography, man. I want to give you guys back as much as possible. So on a best month, I think my best month ever is about 520 euros. But right now I'm living off about 350 euros. So I'm basically just covering rent, covering petrol. You know, I'm trying to walk to places more so I can save money. It's, it's not a great life, but this is how it is. And I, you know, I believe in working hard. I'm going to get there one day. So that's the most important thing. Joseph Cole, you said you've been in Slovenia for a while. Are you done traveling? Joseph. Look at this shit, man. Of course I've been in Slovenia. Uh, no, basically, yes, I have been in Slovenia for a while. It's been 12 months since I haven't left this country now. Basically, it comes down to money. I'm, I'm not broke, but I need to be smart with my money. I've got a business, you know, I'm, I've got a girlfriend now that I need to support with uh, both of us. 
coronavirus hasn't helped, but that's life, man. As long as you get out of bed, you're smiling, you're getting up, grinding, 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 working towards things. I know one day is going to be a brighter future for me, but I just know it's going to be sort of 24, 36 months away, unfortunately, mate. But I've got some plans coming at the end of the year. I've got a huge, huge plan, hopefully, for 2021, but I cannot give it away to you guys because I don't know what's going to happen right now. But a few things coming, definitely cheap trips, you know, to some islands, doing some Milky Way photography, camping, because you know, I need to spend about three, 400 euros a month. So not great, Joseph, but definitely we'll be traveling. Rasmus98, if you could have one camera and one lens, what would it be? Easy answer, I would upgrade to the X-T4 and I would do, shoot with a 16 to 80. I done a vlog last week about the 16 to 80 and 16 to 55. Hands down, 16 to 80 mil is my favorite bloody lens. Image stabilizer, the X-T4 has basically got everything I've asked for, flip screen, better battery, and it's a Fujifilm. I freaking love that shit. So those two hands down would be my way to go. If I had to get one more lens, it'd be a low light lens. I hope Fujifilm make a low light lens, like a 12 or 10 mil F2. This would be hands down the best, but a Samyang F2 is what I would travel with. So two lenses, but if I had to choose one, 16 to 80. Benori. I see you shoot an APS-C. Do you think it's necessary to upgrade to full frame? I shoot APS-C, was wondering upgrading to full frame, but also had a thought of just upgrading to a better APS-C and saving a few dollars. I'm all about saving a few quid, mate. Full frame for me, I used to travel with a full frame. It's heavy, but I used to travel with a bigger DSLR. Now they've gone mirrorless, they have gone a lot smaller. But for me, it's still the lenses. The lenses are quite big, very expensive. Like, I would jump at a Canon today. It, it's a beautiful bit of glass, a beautiful bit of body, but it's bigger, it's heavier, and it's a lot more expensive. Fujifilm, for me, gives me the opportunity to have more lenses at a very affordable price with a great, great body. That's basically what I can say. And the downfalls of that APS-C, the depth of field, I'm a landscape photographer. You know, if I shoot portrait, I would definitely go to like a medium format, full frame. Um, but those 2.8, 16 to 55 with an APS-C, it creates beautiful, beautiful images. Then you go into the primes, you know, it really comes down to what your shooting style is. So, you know, if you want to reach out to me directly, whoever left this comment, directly ask me, if you're a landscape photographer, you know, Micro Four Thirds is going to get your bee's knees done. It's more about what you want, but I found APS-C for me, travel, filmmaking, lightweight, hiking, I can get everything out of it of what I want with a smaller body, but bloody feature pack. That's why I couldn't go micro four thirds, just the low light capabilities that step up, APS-C, absolutely Mickey Mouse. Alex M Photography, what I make. Alex, thanks buddy, I appreciate you. Followed me for quite a long time. Arto Mikola, congrats dude, congrats to you. You are one of my heroes, my unsung heroes. Thank you for following me. Bahashka Debanath, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce English names. Can't pronounce anything because I'm Australian. Fuji cameras are battery hungry and small capacity batteries. How many batteries do you carry for a one day shoot? How many if you go for a trek hike for several days? Do you upgrade, do you, blah, 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 blah. Do you plan to upgrade to the X-T4? If I had money, mate, I would be throwing at the X-T4 right now, but unfortunately there's rent to pay, food to pay. So X-T4 is definitely something I'd want to do and definitely something I want to look at for having one camera. That's what really, really interests me. Um, but on a trek, if I was going multi trekking like we did with Alex, uh, I was carrying all, all six batteries, but I was trying to use two batteries for photos. So when I was doing that sort of, you know, Milky Way photography, I was really cautious of how many images I was taking. But then obviously the film X-H1 with the Ibis, it is hungry as anything. So that's one thing that does interest me the X-T4, that bigger battery life. It sucks, um, but the X-T3 is great because you can carry a uh, separate battery, obviously a battery bank, which is good for that. You can charge overnight, but it is really battery hungry, unfortunately, but it's what you get. Fujifilm have given it to us an X-T4. Hopefully that'll come down one day to 1599. This would be an absolutely sweet camera. So battery life sucks, but the performance out of the camera is absolutely perfect. Ryan Luna, what is your absolute favorite thing to photograph Forest, mountains, nightscapes, cityscapes, macro, wildlife, deserts, etc., waterfalls. Ugh, that's one big sentence. Bloody hell, Ryan. You put me on the spot, mate. If I had to choose one thing, I don't know, because when people say to me, what do you enjoy most about your photography? It would be the storytelling aspect. I love to tell the story out of it. 
um, capture a moment. So I'm going to be pretty blunt here and just say travel because, you know, for me, it's not about going out and capturing one unique thing. If I was in Slovenia, say, it would definitely be mountains. I love mountains. I love telling scale in mountains. I think this is one of my favorite things to do, a human element in a vista with mountains. But my favorite, where I get the most feeling and emotion to do is with travel, like placed in Kyrgyzstan, Albania, um, Northern Africa, these places. You just connect with these locations very, very well. And I don't know, that's what it is for me. It's not a great answer, I'm sorry, but Adventures with Yarn, what sort of drone do you use? I use the um, DJI Mavic Air, the first one. Not the second one that just got released, the DJI Mavic Air. It's smaller, it's lightweight, it's perfect. Two batteries, hike all day, bloody long. How does a drone fit into your plans? Any interested in aerial photography? That's from James M. Um, basically, it's part of the storytelling for me. Uh, when I travel, I want to come back with epic footage to get people to be that wow factor that you know, it hits home, it's sort of amazing. But aerial photography for me, um, it doesn't fit into my plans much at all because I see it on like 50-50. It's unrealistic because we can't ever, you know, connect with it. But secondly, it's so powerful. You know, it's so engaging and people just get that wow factor. So as a photographer, as a purist, I don't think drone photography is brilliant. Um, but as a, as a human man, it's, it's freaking epic. It's in, unbelievable to watch. Um, but you know, when you own a business, it's really hard to um, go out with a drone and just do whatever you want because obviously we have to abide by those rules. And if there's anything about me, I'm a goody goody two shoes. I follow the rules, man. In National Park here, if I see someone flying a drone, I'm straight up to them and I'm arguing with them because I want this beauty in nature to be left exactly how it is. So, uh, Cam Sproul. What's your favorite Fujifilm settings for photography? Mm, I'm gonna go with that with just a little bit of a bypass and saying if I could only, you know, if my camera got jammed on certain settings, what would it be? Um, for travel, I basically, let's just take it this way. If I'm traveling in the back of a car, I'm charging a, uh, charging a camera, I will leave it on f5.6, I'll leave it on ISO 800, and I'll leave the shutter speed to automatic. That's like my go-to because I'm have to jump out the car and there's, you know, Kids walking along, the beautiful storytelling aspect. This is like my go-to settings. I know Fujifilm's gonna really produce the best quality content for me at f5.6. And that 800's that sweet spot. Even if it's during the day, I'll shoot that 800 because I know my shutter speed's going to be fast enough. That's what it's about. So if my camera got jammed, that's what it would be. Do you need an X-T4? No, no one needs anything. Do you prefer the XF 55 to 200 or the 50 to 140? Thanks for your videos, Claudia Ponchant. Ponchant. Claudia, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Do you need an XT4? No. You need a mind, oxygen, whatever. I know it's a rhetorical question, but I don't need an XT4 right now. I'm getting by with XT3 and XH1. I've got too much, if you ask me, actually. Um, but would I love to have one? Yes, hands down. I probably could replace both my cameras. Uh, 55 to 200, definitely. It's lighter, it's cheaper. Uh, I wish it had WR weather resistance, but it doesn't. Um, but for me, it's definitely about quality. That extra focal range is hands down excellent to me. And if I had the 70 to 300, that's apparently getting released at the end of the year, starting next year, this is something I'd definitely be interested in if they have that weather resistant inbuilt. But for me, it's not about that 2.8. I shoot most of that 5.6 F8 for my landscape photography and telephoto. And I want lightweight up in the mountains. I don't want to carry 50 to 140. I thought about it, I thought about it, and thought about it. For me, it's a huge waste of money. I don't need that lens. And the 55 to 200 is bloody pin sharp. Uh, Cam's for again. I've heard that editing Fuji files in Lightroom doesn't work too well. Is this true? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've played around with Capture One. I am playing around with Capture One quite a bit right now uh, to try and improve this. Uh, I've used Lightroom for poor donkey's years, probably last five, six years with Photoshop and Nick Collections is like my go-to. And I've noticed, especially in the X-T3, the new sensor, it's not brilliant. It isn't brilliant. I've done some, you know, I've tried some plugins with this, but I do find Capture One, if you're just solely using Capture One, this is a much better aspect for just using solely uh, one system Lightroom compared to Capture One. But if I do you know, very base settings on Lightroom, then just go straight into Photoshop, 
I find it does a pretty good job, but I, I can't see this perfectly, but I'd say Catch One does a better job. Um, but if Lightroom is all you got, it does a fine job. Moving on to Facebook, my hardcore fans. This is where my hardcore fans are, man. Alex McDougall, well done. Alex, you followed me from day one, man. I know you're an OG follower. Cheers, buddy. Maggie, oh, this woman. I traveled through America with this girl. She is a freak. She'd be looking home right now. Maggie, congratulations on the new house. I've just seen you bought that. What's been your favorite country to take photos in so far? P.S. When I have a sausage roll, I always think of us in that cafe in LA, that Aussie cafe. Miss and love you, mate. Maggie, I love you too. And I'll never forget that day. That was an epic day. Um, off camera, I wasn't vlogging back then. Definitely hands down the West Coast of America. If you're a travel photographer, if you're a photographer, or if you're a human, the West Coast of America is freaking insane. It is incredible. If you want diversity, I hear so many people from different countries saying, our country is the most diverse. I'm sorry, man. America is hands down the most diverse country I've ever been to. Places like Peru, I'd love to visit to see that. But America has got everything everything and that's like one trip in the next three years i'm planning to take you guys on because it is incredible ian Milton, congratulations ian thanks buddy we have to catch up sometime soon and do a vlog together gerben gerben come on my last uh, northern lights workshop last year if you haven't met gerben don't because he's got the worst dad jokes in the world that guy is going to make an incredible father one day hilarious he'll be watching this laughing his guts up right now uh, what is the most adventurous thing you've ever done and why? And any photos to prove that? Oh, Gervin, great question. Most adventurous thing I've done. Um, poor, the list is pretty endless. Um, I mean, I've got many trips in the West Coast of America, North America, um, Kyrgyzstan. I was talking to Alex the other day, went Kyrgyzstan together. We have got some stupid, crazy adventures on that. Any photos to prove that? Um, yeah, but they'll be phone photos probably because as I said, three, four years ago, I wasn't crazy into photography like I am right now. So if I had to choose one, I'd probably say um, the taxi drive from Sahara Desert to Fez in Morocco. It's about a nine hour drive, and I think the taxi drive done it in about four and a half hours. Uh, enough said. Um, Jim Scott, Jim, thank you for following me. You have been a heart and soul to this channel. What's been the most challenging and rewarding image you've ever taken? Oh, gosh, that is a difficult question. I'm gonna have a think about that and get back to that at the end, but because that is a very different question. Ba -da -ba -ba! Jim, I got all the way to the end, mate, and completely forgot to answer that question. So I'm jumping in right now to answer that question. The most rewarding image I've ever taken and the hardest image that I've ever taken. The most rewarding image was from that freaking beautiful place over there called Lake Bled, the place that I call home. 22 years to capture that image, it was like all the stars aligned and that was my moment to sort of shine. I rang one of my best friends when I was up there and spoke to her for quite a long time. Uh, I was very, very emotional when I was up there. It was one of the hardest vlogs I've ever done to keep my mental capacity inside my brain. And yeah, I must admit when I was editing that photo, I, I teared up, I got pretty emotional, not because of anything personal, nothing happened or anything like that, but I wanted to work for myself. I always wanted to travel and fulfill my lifelong dreams. And I said, I wanted to catch that image for 22 years and it just caught me in that moment. You know, I got really emotional and I had to have a whiskey and yeah, I, I was chuffed, man. I was through the roof. All the stars aligned to make me the happiest man right there and then. And you know, even now thinking about it, it's just, shit's real, man. I love it. The most difficult image that I've ever captured. I always say the most difficult image that I haven't captured is the one that I'll never capture that I've always wanted. And there's a few of them, one from Scotland, one from South Africa, and one from back home, the beautiful Australia. The most difficult image that brings to mind would be the one in Scotland uh, on the Isle of Skye. I went up there to photograph the Northern Lights, which I did catch that image. And then in the morning, I got snowed in. Uh, it was extremely cold. My water froze in the car, so I didn't have fresh drinking water. I didn't have enough to eat, so I was basically cooking on rations and I was bogged in there, I couldn't get out. I captured this image and I haven't got the footage anymore. I keep all my footage now, um, basically where I was filming. I turned around, had a really quick wee because I was busting 
it was so yellow. And I knew right there and then I was in trouble. And I was flying the drone and I was running around to catch some drone footage and everything just went spinning. I was like, well, this, this is difficult right now. It's freezing cold. I'm trying to be happy on camera. I'm in a beautiful location, but I'm stuck. I, I'm literally stuck. And I had to spend whole, almost 48 hours out there. And like I said, I was rationing food. And then someone come on the, in a BMW four wheel drive and I just, I, I had to go and grab them. I actually asked them for food. Uh, I asked them for fresh water and they knew, they could tell in my eyes that I was struggling. And I said to them, I've been out for two days. Um, yeah, that was, that was a pretty real moment, you know. I tried to be stupid, tried to capture some footage for you guys, and I was living the high life. Um, yeah, it wasn't great, but every time I look at that photo, I love it, but it brings back some pretty dark memories of how stupid I was, how young and stupid basically. So that was def definitely a unrewarding image, let's say to speak, but old Matthew, take it away. Uh, Julie, another lady I traveled through with America, absolute legend. We had an epic road trip through America together. Congrats on 10K, Julie, thank you. Thank you. Any plans to do more night shoots? What is something surprising you've learned about yourself through all the travel and photography you've done? Also, I'm still waiting on that coffee table book. I promised you a coffee table book in 2014 and she still hasn't got the table. That's why I haven't given it to her. Julie, I one day promise this is on my to-do list in the future to make coffee table books of my year. I would love to get that out to you guys. Something surprising you've learned about yourself um, resilience, never give up. I've been, you know, I'm not going to say I've come from a hard life or anything like that, but I put myself out there in life to have challenges thrown at me and I traveled out of my backpack for about four years straight and resilience, get up, do things, do it. I'm struggling right now to get up out of bed and do things and I want to go back to my old roots, just getting up. If you want things done, get shit done. Don't complain about it. Don't speak to your girlfriend, your husband, your mum, your dad about complaining about it. Think to yourself, are you doing shit right now? And if not, you're to blame, unfortunately. And photography, poor. Just make mistakes. Just keep making mistakes and you're going to get there one day. Trust me on that. I looked at my old photos the other day. He was shit back then, two years ago. Chris Stark, how to shoot basic videos such as B-roll, slow motion? What and how do you decide to shoot in your video so it flows? Great question. Um, when you're there, whatever sparks your mind, if you love this flower, oh, almost touched stinging needles, that would have hurt. If you, if you love this flower, shoot that flower. What, you know, when you go over top of that mountain ridge, what captures your eye? Shoot it. People want to see that shit. People love the storytelling. That's what I lost for a long time. Chris, if you love it, man, I guarantee you, a shit ton of other people will love it also. And, you know, express your journey the way you want to do it. Because if I went out with 10 people and shot a video, you know, from here to climb that mountain, there'd be 10 different videos, mate. If you come, there's 11 different videos. So just portray what you love, but different focal ranges, um, different motions, like you said, 30 frames, 60, 120 frames, if you can shoot that. And yeah, storytelling, just shoot what you love to shoot, mate, because people out there will love that. Getting up to Instagram, shtravel.nl. What countries are still on your bucket list to photograph? Oh. Um, okay, taking you guys back to a few locations. The West Coast of America over three months. Um, New Zealand, uh, Mongolia. I spoke to Alex about there could be something coming along there, which should be nice. Uh, Europe, I'm pretty close to being done in Europe right now. Um, but definitely Madeira. Madeira on Portugal is being thrown up in the air right now. And South Africa. These are places I'm definitely talking about. If money was no more of an issue, Iceland, I would love to get to Iceland, but unfortunately my broke ass can't get me there. Steph, uh, another girl I met in America. Plenty of friends coming back. I appreciate all the support, guys. What's the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? Um, go to the toilet and take a wee-wee. Uh, what do I do? I get mentally prepared. I'm a huge person to write notes. I write notes to cross shit off. I love that. I love crossing shit off. It's like a huge, Smile on my face, writing shit down, getting the day started, but you know, as always, make your bloody bed. Make your bed before you get up, because you have a shit day, you can come back and something's been conquered for today. To Comerford, how are getting on with the new tripod? I'm currently in the market on a Genesis, ah, Genesis tripod, uh, high on my list and review there. 
That Genesis tripod is being filmed right now. I love that freaking tripod. I still believe it's the best bang for buck and that review got very heavily scrutinized being Chinese. That tripod is made in Poland, guys. I'm still in contact with the people from Genesis trying to get you guys an incredible discount for those Genesis tripods because they are fantastic. I still have to get it done in the Arctic when it's beaming hot in the Sahara to test it out fully. That's the one thing I can't say I haven't tested it out fully. But you know, I've shot with it in minus six in Slovenia. Nothing wrong with it. I love that tripod and actually right now I'm using it more because I haven't got my main photo right now. That's lighter. It is absolutely bloody incredible. Made in Poland, carbon fiber, best bang for buck, 199 euros for the legs and the ball head and spikes and six years warranty. So if you have to complain about something, don't complain about Genesis tripod. Six years warranty, if something breaks in five years, you're gonna get a bloody new one. How about that? And Alex, I reached out to Alex and said, hey man, one question. If you could ask me anything, what would it be? He said, your worst travel experience and most desperate situation. People love that shit, he said. I spoke to Alex on the phone for maybe four, three hours of the day, just talking about old stuff, trying to perk up our dull lives right now in this coronavirus pandemic. Some of the shit we spoke about, it, it really does put things into perspective of what stupid shit you do when you travel and why we love traveling, why we get out of bed, why we sit in camp, you know, while we fart so much in the tent and you know, laugh about it. Alex, we're sitting there laughing so much right now, but the, the shit we do that we cannot express back to you guys is crazy. But my worst, worst moment I have ever have to say, mum, dad, I love you. I'm really sorry I have to tell you this over camera, but I didn't ever want to tell you this was, uh, I was photographing in Portugal, an absolutely incredible place of Porto, doing some seascape photography. And I was crossing the very famous bridge in Porto and I felt uncomfortable. It was very late at night. I could see three uh, or four people coming and they split up the other side of the bridge and they come up to me. And one thing I'm so glad I've always done since I first started traveling with a camera is carry my tripod separately. Uh, they approached me with a knife, uh, asked me to give them all their money in my backpack. And obviously I had an absolute shit ton of camera gear in there that would have been worth thousands of euros. And I had my tripod always by my hand and luckily I swung it at him and ran. Yeah, it, it, it shook me up for quite a long time. Not many things shake me up, but this did shook me like, Even right now talking about it, it wasn't a great moment, I'll be honest with you. Um, but put it this way, a long time of travel, a hundred countries been passed, and I could put on my fingers how many times I've been <sighs> shitting myself when I've been traveling. So, you know, I've been worst placed in London, in Paris, you know, travel isn't that bad. And this is one particular time. It could have happened to me in my hometown of Port Pirie. I don't know, it could happen anywhere. But one thing we did speak about with Alex was, I just bought a GoPro. I was super happy about it. It was my 10K uh, present to myself because I want to record more shit to you guys. It's one thing Alex and I spoke about so much was recording everything. I want to story tell more, you know, farting in the tents to, been super afraid driving down Barksoon Valley because all the trucks were staring at us because we didn't know there was a gold mine down there. Uh, I want to be, you know, having a GoPro, I mean, I'm talking to these kids that have no idea what I'm saying, but they're so cute staring at me. I love that shit about travel and that is what I want to bring you guys. Alex, you'll be sitting there and know exactly what I'm talking about and guys, I hope we have this same conversation when I hit 20K subscribers. I'm going to say, I told you so. That's why I love a GoPro. I just want to travel. <sighs> Guys, from the bottom of my bloody heart, I cannot say thank you enough for supporting me week in, week out. For all those people that have left negative comments, thank you for building me stronger as a person, as a human. Those people that have left nice comments, thank you from the bottom of my heart. You don't understand how many times I read those comments and some of that shit makes me emotional, guys. You don't know how it feels, you know, off camera, I'm such a shy person that doesn't have many friends. I don't want many friends. I would be so afraid to do this 10 years ago, five years ago, speak to a camera, but <sighs> the hard work, the support you guys give me makes it so, so nice. There is 10,000 so nice people out there and hopefully this will keep going, but guys, I love you so much. 
thank you for everything. I'll see you guys on the next one. Happy and bright as ever. Ciao.